see the growth of like the scene. I just knew that our thing was gonna get big. The call was designed to kind of intimidate. That in itself was shocking. You have to understand when Grand Daily initially kicks off, there isn't any money. So for certain, it was all drugs and robbery money. The music don't work, then I know for certain. What do you think? Sketch, sketch. The YouTube's been shut down. Like, what's happened? Everyone was just calling till everyone stopped calling. Imagine 2,000 videos are on your channel and they all get deleted. All the videos are gone. But it's minor though, everything's normal. Yes, we lost the views, yes, we lost the blah, blah, blah. Not to worry though, don't panic or nothing. Yeah, I was panicking, I was panicking, I was proper panicking. It just didn't seem real. We're trending on Twitter like GRM, terminated. It was bad, bro. It was very, very bad, bro. Where's our vid? Where's the vid going? What are we going to watch? That was, like, one of the saddest days of my life, bro. If anything goes wrong, the last person you want to hear from is Lethal B. He just sounds too happy all the time. He's just like, what, what? I was like, what, what? Like, he told me some war, war, war excuse. I was like... We were told it's because we had three strikes on our channel. We only had, like, one copyright strike. That was from a month ago, so they should never have terminated the channel. Then, apparently, it was because someone had bought video views on a video. OK, cool, that's resolved. Channel's still dead. It was just, like, so many different reasons and we never actually ever got a clear one. Obviously, all these rumours are flying around straight away. People are like, oh, do you think this person did it? Do you think that person did it? I said to Posty, it's a conspiracy. I rung him and I said, bro, that don't just happen. There's bare conspiracies, bare this happened, bare, oh, this person tried to take this down. And... My man from the Virgin. R yeah, Richard Branson, he's taking it down. The main rumour that we had was that SBTV got it shut down. Everyone thought I shut down GRM. Like, I was brought up better than that. I took a whole year out from YouTube. I was hiding from them, because there's this rule that says if you ever come back, you'll get deleted again. So we took out a whole year just trying to work out what we were going to do. You can imagine how much of the scene's archive footage went down with that channel. People were genuinely devastated. Nothing we could do could get the channel back up. And we didn't know what to do. After a month, we were done out here. Finished. A lot of people got signed off at the back of my thing going right. And then and then again, the new wave again when I did the pop thing. Bonkers. It was a mad time in the UK music industry, especially in black music, because it was during the height of uh, what I'd call the commercial period of MC. One, I don't understand how you're number one. We started to actually get a little bit of UK commercial success, but the sound was changing a bit. Initially, the records that started to cross out of the scene and become like pop hit records, they all started to, they, they all kind of sounded one way. Slowly but surely, the sound evolved, and then, yeah, we got to 2010, and then I made Pass Out. Yeah, yeah, we bring the stars out, we bring the women and the cars and the cars out. I remember like, Wow, like, there's all these white kids from Middle England that, like, want to hear us. Like, this is sick. You were either the purist going, nah, man, you're selling out by doing that, or you were like, rah, something's happening over here. And you had the explosion of that commercial UK black music, UK urban sound, N-dubs, Tinchy, Chipmunk, Tiny Temper, etc. Um, and, you know, we never crucify any of that batch of people for what they'd done because um, they were playing by the rules of the game at that time. They had to make commercial music. You know, it's very difficult for you as a person to kind of make music for like five or six years and you're not getting major bread from it. That's long. I think that that's what that commercial period was all about. People saw the opportunity, people saw the economy in it, and then more money started to come and the scene and the culture started to expand. Let's have a toast to celebration, get a glass out. Ooh. Come on. That was you first. What's she? It's coming, it's coming, bro, relax. <laughs> Working out, working out, working out. Cheers, my lad. Cheers, 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 cheers. A good life. Cheers, 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 cheers. 100%. Cheers. The 
at this point, SBTV was absolutely killing it. Jamal had the Google advert. What are you doing, doing me? And we didn't even have a fucking YouTube channel. Next minute, you know, this advert's after every X Factor. I'm talking X Factor. So I first picked up a camera when I was about 15, February 2007. That was the, like, first official video. Birmingham, Cadbury's factory, <laughs> right about now. We got oh, Smokey oh, Buzz. I was at, on a school trip, Cadbury's chocolate factory, and, yeah, I was just filming my classmates, spitting bars behind, behind Cadbury's chocolate factory. So SB essentially started in Brum. <laughs> Imagine that, nuts. <laughs> We ain't seen nothing like this before. This is crazy. I enjoy friendly competition. GRM would keep me on my toes, do you know what I'm saying? So, like, that's what sort of inspires my entrepreneurial spirit. Like, back in the day, it was, like, being told no. <clears throat> that was my biggest motivator. Like, no, you can't do that. No, you can't film the artist. No, you can't get them out of views. I was like, all right, cool, watch me. When you first start a platform, you have to have that self-belief. SB, Jamal is always going to be like he set pace, you know? So he just had freestyles. I remember a lot of the F64s were popping off. They want 64 bars, I want 64 whips and yards. And I don't care who they think that they are, because I'll laugh at your staff and I'll carve them in half. I was looking at the whole scene, I saw so many, like, sick freestyles, and I was thinking, how do you, like, level it up? So it's like, um, F64, at that time, um, my whole format was, I'd, it had to be fresh and it had to be 64 bars. And I think formats helped like a lot in the, in the early days, definitely. Sorry kids, let me apologize before I go further. Unfortunately, I don't rap about how many man I've murdered. And you may find it boring, appalling, and I ain't scoring blacks from your little rap packs for just stating facts. I think the F64 time was mad because it was just like such a sick concept. But it was like, my freestyles looked the same as your freestyles, but just because they were called F64 and it was 64 bars, everyone was going crazy at that. The fuck is wrong with you lot? It's the same shit. <laughs> it's the same fucking shit. It's the different name. Hello? Doing an F64 became a thing, right? You, both of the times I did two F64s, and then like for the next two months, every time you leave your house, someone will say, fam, I saw your F64. I saw your F64. So the reaction was very immediate. It was like, being on national radio. SBTV's F64s were flying in, and we didn't have, we had nothing. We had nothing. Out of nowhere, Link Up TV popped up. You know what, this is when Link Up TV really did their bit for the culture, you know? Pillars of the community. They went ham. I used to produce music. My laptop literally stopped working. So I lost all my beats. I lost all the faith I had in music. And I thought, let me just start filming. I kind of created a lane of, if, even if it's not music videos, things like behind the scenes. Sound check. That's it, we got time, cause we're always late in it, but that's his fault. Just giving you more than you're getting normally. Rashid is like an animal because uh, he would be at an event, and I don't know how, but it would be up. I remember the quickest thing that I'd done, Eskimo dance, DWE was on stage doing what he does best. So I was filming it, filming it, filming it. While the event's still going on, I just had my laptop there, Premiere Pro, black and white, put my logo in there. I already had the preset ready, hot spotted my laptop, and I was uploading it the same night the event was going on. When I started Graham Daily, my brothers would have been like 10. And they always looked at me like I was a hero. One day they were just like, how comes Link Up TV get all the good videos? Graham Daly doesn't really do anything. I was like, wow, like, the disrespect has now entered my household. <laughs> After that day, I was like, nah, I gotta be the man at home at least. My connect's still breathing. Trapping it dead. When GRM and, you know, SBTV and Link Up TV sort of, sort of all came around, it really made my job easier, if I'm being honest with you. It kind of gave me the cheat code to what was happening um, on a street level outside of my own immediate circle, because obviously they give us the hard data that we see, but they give us the cultural data as well. And that gives you an indication. It's not always fact, but it gives you an indication as to what 
um, council estate culture is consuming at the moment. And we know that council estate culture dictates youth culture, certainly has done for the last 10 years, and it probably will do for another 10 or 15 years. That was a good time. That was a good time. Yeah, but even though I wasn't thinking about, oh, we're ahead, I was just keeping it moving, man. You know? Because there's no end destination to this, man. We just got to keep levelling up. Then you just seeing what they're doing, and it's like, are they bigger than us right now? So wait, we're not even second no more. We're third. It felt like the business was in tatters, but the good thing is the brand was there. There was something in the brand. If you wrote this as a script for a film, it would look exactly how it happened. We had like a bunker meeting in this war room, like, what the fuck are we gonna do? We started looking for investors and just someone who was more connected to be able to just get our YouTube back. Bruv, we were depressed. <laughs> we, we were sad, you know what I'm saying? We were sad because it was like, we had no YouTube channel and we was in debt. Started to speak into some people. They're like, oh, you know, we can get your YouTube back. They had an office in um, Tottenham Court Road. So we gave them a part of our business away for free, hoping to get the YouTube back because that was everything to us. It looked like a really great thing to do. Going to solve our YouTube problem, going to give us content to get our channel up and running and just help us make shit happen. We just felt like maybe we weren't professional and these people are. And, you know, the office was in the West End. We were having meetings every week to, you know, update the shareholders on what was happening and stuff. But that went south because these things that we're talking about started not happening. They couldn't get their YouTube back. But what we did learn there was how to be a business. And as, like, 20-year-olds, it was important for us to actually learn that because we didn't have a clue. We needed to kind of put our passion back into the right things instead of, like, living off old clout. You know, you could have a whole accounts team or a whole lawyer team or a whole this team. Or... If you ain't got nothing going on, it doesn't really matter what, what you got, so... I just kindly ask everybody to give me their shares back. At this point, you've now got Professor Green successful, Wretch32 is successful. Obviously, Tiny's lead, leading the pack. Um, Emily's doing what she's doing on, on a global stage. There's just a lot going on, but it's kind of new, if you see what I'm saying. And, and it's the same kind of key people who are around all of these artists, writers, and producers, there's probably about 10, 12 people, if you understand what I'm saying. So I literally rounded us all up and was like, look, we should, not we should hold hands, sing Kumbaya, and all be one company, but we should actually set a tone for what it is we want to be doing going forward and working together. And Crept and Conan were those next ones, basically. If she ain't fucking, she got to go. Yeah. Tell her don't waste my time. Police wanna stop me, search my clothes. Word. Tell them don't waste my time. A lot of labels didn't know how to market us. It was weird for them. They didn't know you're rappers, are you, are you funny, are you street? Like, what are you? Where's your pass out? Where's your tractor? And they was like, this is what you need to make. This is the only way you're gonna get on radio. We want you to be funny. Be funny, be, com be comical. Someone said, get a singer in your group, and then we can do like an N-dubs thing. Like, we heard everything, bro. Then we was like, blood. Fuck everyone, man. Fuck everyone. I remember we, we had a convo with Skepta as well. He was just like, do your thing. Yeah, build like, up your value, build man. Build up you. your thing, and they will come to you, bro. Mm. Like, you don't need them. Then we started doing what we wanted to do, innit? Young Kings, boom. <laughs> There were a lot of people back then that weren't of or from the culture that didn't understand it, but were in control of it. People that sign checks, people that choose what gets played on this channel and get, you know what I mean? People that make decisions, they don't take you serious. As musicians, as artists, we're kind of being dictated to what we should be doing. What often happens is that is what is the appeal from other people. We love it. We love it for its rawness. We love it for what it is. 
then it shifts and goes into the industry and then it has to become other things now you're talking about how do we get another radio hit when the hit that was made was because it was raw and it was real it doesn't have to have taylor swift on the record for it to go it could be something in the right space and i think that was a good learning for the uk it was like you have to have that authenticity in the music that's what really connects to people At that time, still walking around thinking Graham Daly was something, like had this mad victim attitude. Well, I could have been this if my channel didn't get deleted, you know what I'm saying? Walking around with that energy for like two years. It gets boring, bro, and no one cares. So it was all about actually focusing on rebuilding the company, rebuilding the brand, and actually working on the right things that were going to put us back on the map. I was working at British car auction because I was, was effed. I needed money. Yeah, I got a phone call from Posty. I met him in Harringay, North London, and he's explaining to me what happened to Graham Daly. And then he's like, what are you doing now? And I was like, I'm driving cars at uh, BCA. You know what I mean? I'm dreaming of driving the Lamborghini today. And he's like, well, come and work for me then, innit? And Posty just gave me a Graham Daly top, <laughs> the hoodie. And he's like, I'm shooting mist. Are you around to take photos? He gave me a second opportunity, but I think he had a second opportunity himself, do you know what I mean? Graham Daly, it, it just felt like it carried too much bad history. Even though we had such sick accomplishments with it, so I was like, let's just change it, rebrand it. GRM, check it out on a daily. GRM, M, M. GRM daily was like the new brand. Artists were doing rap and doing all this other music, and everyone was moaning, oh, it's not even grime anymore, it's not even grime. I love grime fans, they're amazing, but they're also kind of bullies, you know? Calling it GRM daily just made them get off our backs a little bit more as well, so it was like grime, rap, music. So we say, hey, let's have a launch party. It's all about GRM Daily. Come back firing though, you get me? They come back firing, so I was happy as well because I know the man was upset when it when it threw his arm. For right, well done, you look, you got managed to, to get it back on YouTube don't play games. Watching how they've come back and rebuild it, I think it was actually the greatest thing that happened because it's when you go down you come back stronger, bigger and better. We lost the whole channel, start again. Lose the company almost, we'll go again. Do you know what I mean? And that's supposed to be perseverance. And then I see him just bringing a whole heap of young people. They were fans of what we had done, I guess. <laughs> building this empire, do you know what I mean? Building this ecosystem for other people to eat, for people to make beautiful stuff, do you know what I mean? And it's, we're all involved. It felt like this is our thing now. We're not sharing this with nobody. But SB was like 200, 300 in front. And it's like, how do we get there? So Kobe came up with this thing called a daily duppy. I woke up with a point to prove. I'm going to use like a free point turn in the desert. That's a point to smooth. I told my nigga. Daily duppy is definitely my favorite freestyle idea for someone like me, obviously, doing the double entendres and uh, triple entendres, metaphors and similes. Are you turn the kettle on? Play the same role as my ex. Obviously, that was like a, a freestyle series at the beginning, but we decided to just like make it sick put graphics in it, like, turn it into this whole mental thing that, that no one else was really doing. Digging in my mind like a mine when I show them gems. They think that to bust it up, you got on the skin. I was more excited about a Daily Duffy because people were able to fully digest everything I was saying. The graffiti or the, the art around. It's these genius ideas that keep people centred to what you're doing. You really want that notorious film? You best record like Tupac did. Yeah. Daily Duffy, a quick Daily Duffy, let's go. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Nigga, you know how much money that is? <laughs> there was friendly competition between everyone, but that helped. 
you know, take everyone to the next level. Everyone was striving to go to the next level. It's like, what are we doing now? What can we do better? Like, how do we set the bar high? You just got to keep the content game up. I am Mr. Biggs, and this is Dine Daily. I don't reckon you've made a cake like that in your fucking life, bro. You're a barber. Yeah. And you're crazy enough to allow this to happen. Bro, he's got a point five, five bro. <laughs> <laughs> he is driving slow. The reset to where it is now and how quickly they rebuilt that. It shows you how much people value the brand. It's not easy to put all that work in, have it taken away, and then do it again. It shows that the people care about it. Yeah, even, what the f <laughs> <laughs> You can't stop it. Like, there's no way of holding it back now, and it's like the lid's been ripped off, and now it's exploded. That was a beautiful thing, and to see Graham do that, amazing. Things were nice, like, we, we had a career. What we saw in our heads in terms of success, we were seeing with our hands physically, like, oh, okay, cool. Around about that time, I think I started to take church seriously. As I'm finding out more about God, I started to feel, like, uncomfortable with the content that we're making. If these, my siblings, came and said to me, oh, yeah, do you know what? Right, and they started spitting to me what this person's spitting. I'm going to be like, what are you doing? But then I was telling someone else's younger brother and sister, make sure that you watch this. And more things like that just started to pop out at me. Me and Coasty, I think our friendship had deteriorated and we started to grow apart. There was a lot of resentment there just because we'd had a lot of downs, you know? And it's like, sometimes when you're down and you're working with someone every day, it can get a little bit tedious. I just didn't feel comfortable anymore. It's like I was being two people. When I'm doing Grime Daily stuff, I'm handling stuff that if I was at church, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be promoting. God made it very clear to me that, do you know what, Pierre, it's, it's time to leave, like, you need to go. When I finally got around to meeting Posty, I don't think he understood the severity of it, of what I was trying to do. I remember saying, like, you know what, like, I just, like, I'm done, like, I don't, yeah, I can't do it anymore, so to speak, I'm out. And I remember he's like, oh, really? So, like, oh, okay. And then that was, that was it. And even just thinking about it now, I think it spoke a lot about where our friendship was at the time. Do you know what? Everything aside, world ends tomorrow and all that stuff, that's your boy, that's your friend, you know? Like, I've known him since he's had hair, do you know what I mean? It's like, Ross, so where were we? Pierre had gone, which I never thought would ever happen in a million years, do you know what I mean? And it was just post he left. I didn't have no one to depend on now, so it, just, it was just all on me at the time. You know, failure or success was just on me. Right now, a young kid literally one upload away from changing their lives. Hey, who went to? They got a madness here, you know? I'm just watching the video get some mad views, bro. Rated Awards was one of those necessities. The awards show was like the music. It, like, it just went hand in hand. Man's obviously from a time where the peas wasn't matching how famous a man was. To see how everything's flourishing now, like, it's a beautiful thing to watch. Man's off. <laughs> <laughs> that cool, yeah? <laughs> so I was a bit nervous. <laughs> I thought I knew you from somewhere. You was the one telling me I can't smoke and that. Yeah, you did it anyway. Yeah, I'm a I call you Rules. That's what you're doing, Rules. Yo, it's mad warm in here. I'm cooking. I feel like I'm getting a tan, yeah? <laughs> Ta Tinchi Strider. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was going to say Tinchi Temper, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs>